Once when the gods were young and only their town servants were without age, the gods lay sleeping by a far-reaching river upon earth. There in the valley of earth, the gods dreamed of crystal dreams. And with the domes and peaks, the dreams arose and stood up proudly between the river and the sky, all shimmering white to the morning light. In the city, amongst the gleaming crystals of a thousand steps, climbed to the castle, where arose four peaks summoning the heavens. And midway between the high points, there stood the dome, vast as the gods had dreamed of, all around, terrace by terrace. There went crystal lawns, well guarded by the sons of the Most High, and carved with statues of all the gods, walking among the symbols of the worlds. With a sound like a clinking bells, far off in the land of guides hidden by some hill, the waters of many fountains turned again homeward. Then the gods awoke and there stood Atlantis, not to common men have gods given to walk Atlantis streets, and not to common eyes to see her fountains. Only to those whom in solitary passing within the night the gods have spoken, leaning through the stars to those that have heard the voices of the gods above the morning or seen their faces bending above the sea. Only to those has it been given to see Atlantis, to stand where the high points gathered together in the night fresh from the dreams of gods. For around the valley a desert lies, for which no common traveller may come. But those whom the gods have chosen feel suddenly a great longing in their heart. And crossing the mountains that divide the desert from the well, set out across it, driven by the gods. Till hidden in the desert's heart, they find the valley at last and look with eyes upon Atlantis. In the desert beyond the valley grow a valley of thorns and all pointing towards Atlantis. So may many that the gods have loved come to the crystal city, but none can return. For other cities are no fitting home for men whose feet have touched Atlantis crystal streets. For even the gods have not even been ashamed to come into the guise of men with their cloaks wrapped about their faces. Therefore, no city shall ever hear the songs that are sung in the crystal castle by those in whose ears have rung the voices of gods. No story shall ever come to other lands of the music of the fall of Atlantis mountains. When the waters which flow heavenward return again into the lake where the gods call their brows, sometimes in the guise of men, None may ever hear the speech of poets of that city, to whom the gods have spoken. It stands a city indifferent, there has been no rumour of it. I alone have dreamed of it, and I may not be sure that my dreams are true. Above the twilight, the gods were seated in the after years, ruling the worlds. No longer now they walked at evening in the crystal city, hearing the fountain splash, or listening to the singing of the men they loved, because it was in the after years and the work of the gods was to be done. But often, as they rested a moment from doing the work of gods, from hearing the prayers of men and sending their mercy, they would speak a while with one another of the golden years, saying, remember our Atlantis, and another would answer, Ah, Atlantis, and all Atlantis covered crystal lawns whereupon we walk no more. Then the gods turned to do the work of gods, answering the prayers of men or striking them with their dark servant time to heal or overwhelm. And time went forth into the worlds to obey the commands of the gods. Yet he cast secret glances at his masters and the gods distrusted time because he had known the worlds that gods became. One day when the secret time 
had gone into the worlds to quickly strike some city whereby the gods were wary. The gods above the twilight speaking to one another said, Surely we are the lords of time and gods of worlds. See how our city Atlantis lifts over the cities. Others arise and perish, but Atlantis stands yet, the first and the last of cities. Rivers are lost in the sea and streams forsake the hills, but ever Atlantis mountains arise in our dream city. As with Atlantis, when the gods were young, so are her streams today, as a sign that we are the gods. Suddenly the short figure of time stood up before the gods, with both hands dripping with blood and a red sword dangling from his fingers, and said, Atlantis is gone, I have overthrown it. And the gods said, Atlantis? Atlantis, the crystal city? You? You have overthrown it? You, the slave of gods, and the oldest of the gods said, Atlantis? Atlantis? And is Atlantis gone? And secretly time looked at him in the face and edged towards him, fingering with his dripping fingers the tip of his soul. And the gods feared with a new fear that he had overthrown their city, would one day slay the gods. And a new cry went wailing through the twilight, the weeping of the gods for their dream city. Crying, tears may not bring again Atlantis, but this the gods may do, we have seen, and seen with the unrelenting eyes, the sorrows of ten thousand wells, thy gods may weep for thee. Tears may not bring again Atlantis. Believe it not, Atlantis, that ever thy gods sent this doom to thee. He that has overthrown thee shall overthrow thy gods. How soft when the night came suddenly upon morning, playing in the fields of twilight, did we watch thy high points emerging from the darkness. Atlantis, Atlantis, dream city of the gods, and the sons of the Most High approaching branch by branch from the dusk. How often have we sent our children of the dawn to play with our fountain tops? How often have evening the loveliest of our goddesses strayed long upon our balconies? Let one fragment of our crystal stand up above the dust, for our old gods do care. As a man, when all else lost, reserves one lock of hair of his beloved, Atlantis of gods must kiss once more the place where wonderful crystals lay in our streets of Atlantis. Atlantis, Atlantis, the gods arrive for you once more. <laughs>